Normally when we do these, we're driving the moment it starts. There's a normal for these? There, kind of. It's normal. It's, it's a little different. Okay. But, but this, this, is, right. this is the new normal for 2020. We are in the 2021 right. Right. Toyota Sienna minivan. Yeah. This is a pre-production car. This isn't even like off the assembly line yet. This is brand new. And we thought, because minivans are not really about driving, first and foremost, that we should no. start by talking about everything it does, and then we'll drive it. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. It is all hybrid drivetrain. Yep. That means 178 horsepower engine, which is kind of weak, but 180 <laughs> horsepower motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combined, this hybrid system has 375 pound-feet of torque. Let's be honest, what you're doing here with your minivan is you're buying a box. These are selling, and as a matter of fact, Toyota's demographics say that 44% of Sienna buyers have kids. I would have thought it would have been 99.99999% percent of the buying population for Siennas have kids, and yet it's under 50%. That's surprising. Okay, so with under 50% ownership, Sienna ownership not having kids, Who's buying these? The, mm. the people who don't have kids, who, what are you buying it for? And you know that middle word in SUV and CUV is utility. None of us are buying it for the driving experience. You want to sit up high and you need the utility yes. and you need yes. the larger kind of people and gear and stuff. And I maintain that this minivan is better at the SUV things equipped with all-wheel drive mm. than many SUVs. If you are buying for, I need this to haul stuff, yeah. then what you need, let's be honest, is the biggest, most open, cavernous space possible, and a minivan still does that best, because it is front wheel drive with the transverse mounted engine yes. shoved way to the front, yes, and all it is is a big hole to put stuff. I mean, uh, look, yeah. wa watch this, watch this, hang on. I can even go back. Those doors are handy. I can even go back. And I'm a big guy. That was easy. That was, I could do, you know what? I could do this too. Hang on, hang on. I could come in the back. Oh no. Did you know? He likes doing this. Did you know that this seat it. right here, my knees aren't touching the seat in front of me. Yeah. Now I don't want to go cross country right yeah. here. I don't, but my knees are not touching the seat in front of me. And hang on, oh. if you go here, this is the exact same amount back as the one behind. Again, I've got space behind. However, if you don't need people in the back, goodbye. I'm almost even with the back seat. Uh, look, look, these are my feet. I've got long legs. I'm a big guy. This is a lot of space back here. He's explaining why other people who don't have kids might consider buying the Sienna. True. Incredible. I don't know why done. you'd ever do this, but look. Hey! It's a game. Now I've got lots of space in the very back. It's a game now. It is kind of fun. You'll, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked <laughs> by how much space is in there. Oh, this is great. This is, honestly, that is more than a first class airline seat. Oh, yeah. As far, well, not the width, but definitely the, you know. But the fact that you can almost, I mean, you have longer I, legs than I, I can do. kick you the can, back of the driver's you seat. You can, but, but you can almost put your legs completely straight. Yeah, which is great. Now, on the upper trim levels, not the XSE trim level that we've got, on the upper trim levels, you have the ottoman that folds out yes. from this seat, which makes it kind of like a, a livery, a Business drive class. share, yes. you know, yes. uh -huh. Uber, Lyft kind of vehicle, mm -hmm. which is interesting. It's more like an airport pickup kind of van. I agree, I agree, yeah. Because you can get big people in here. This, to me, is the ultimate cross-country road trip vehicle, because who cares what the car drives like when you're road tripping. We'll go you one further. I want this, this. I want to be here. This is the rare opportunity. Think about cross-country family road trips. Think about how awful those can be. If you aren't yeah. a family of more than four, the place you want to be on the cross-country road trip it's, in the minivan is the back in seats. The back. Yes. Now, again, we're starting here because this is the stuff this does the best. So the way they've packaged it is the battery is under these two front seats up here. So it is a nickel metal hydride battery, which means if you're fearful about the whole, it's a hybrid and will it last and 
will it have a good warranty? 10 years, 150,000 miles. But now with all this space, mm -hmm. all this utility, you don't need the higher floor, the higher ride height of SUVs mm -hmm. unless you're doing true off-roading. You're right. You're right. Well, and so the off-roading... So why wouldn't you get this over an SUV? Well, but if the off-roading you're doing I'm is asking. because somebody spilled some gravel in the pickup line at school, this is really good for that. Or you know what? We're going to off-road our way through Starbucks and it's under construction. This is the kind of off-roading families really right. are doing. And in that right. kind... I mean, again, look, I'm not... Look. I'm halfway as far back as you are, and I've got tons of space. I know that Toyota is not the only one doing stuff like this. Yeah. But again, I wanted to start in a place where we're, we're playing to this thing's strengths. And the way that these seats fold up is nuts. The, in the back? Oh, yeah. you got to see this. We've got two overhead cases in there. We still haven't filled that side. This has now gone flat. Yeah. Okay? But then, overhead case, right? Right. And it's gone because you don't have anything back there but space. Right. You're not worried about running gear, there's no suspension, it's just a hole. This is where minivans make sense. It's a shipping container. How do you want to fill it? And let's be honest, if you're a family, you have stuff. We need to talk about the styling here. The rear end is just a box. And what I love about what Toyota's doing is they've gotten very aggressive. Do you see these canards? This is now standard as far as a styling theme, a corporate theme across all of, almost all of their cars. The Supra, definitely the Toyota Camry and the Avalon, now the Sienna. And what they've done here, look at the fenders. This Thor's hammer shape that's on the Highlander is now on the Sienna, which I think really sets this off. How do you make a box look cool? Fender flares. Great. I am most impressed with just the usability of space in here. Now, we actually yep. had the prior version of the Sienna fully loaded with the Ottomans when we did our Spectrum of Sacrifice piece. That was an earlier gen of this. Yeah. Yeah. And it had similar things with these seats that roll back and all that kind of stuff. So this is not the first time a minivan's done this. It's not the first time the Sienna's done this. Sure. I am intrigued by the fact that Toyota's gone all hybrid powertrain. You have the new screen that they've been working on that is in all of their things. We've seen it in the Highlander and the Corolla and it does Apple CarPlay and Android yeah. Auto, all of that kind of stuff. But everything is really high and up by the driver, which creates crazy space extra places like look at this i can i can bury my arm in the center console it'll take almost almost a 12 pack of soda will go in there yeah and there yeah. is this hang on i gotta look at this too there is this space here oh yeah there's this look the I bridge can, the bridge and you know that's for a big purse Let's be honest. That's for you a, could put a huge purse in there. Also, we put one of our bag. we put one of our camera cases down there, and it fits. Yes. One of our like medium sized backpack camera cases goes under there too. Fine. It. This is a cavernous Indeed. space. This is using everything that's available because ultimately, I, I I honestly feel like somebody took this and designed it first by just saying, okay, what are the box dimensions, and now. Yes. Let's take it from there and figure out how can we fill it as efficiently as possible so it remains this cavernous cathedral of storage for families. Cavernous Seriously. cathedral of storage. Seriously. What Todd is talking about is designers figuring out how a thing is used, whether that's furniture or shoes or eyeglasses or whatever that is, whatever you're designing, it's important for designers to go understand how the thing is used. And it feels like that. Look at this. The climate controls aren't buried in the screen. True. True. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I don't have to dig through other menus. Mm -hmm. It's the nav, it's audio, it's that kind of stuff. But separately, this is still available. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Dual climate, so it prevents the family fights and all that kind of stuff. But then you've got 16 cup holders, seven USB ports. There's space for, <laughs> there's a G charger up front. There's space for everything. You can put stuff everywhere in this thing. But it does feel like the whole design team thought, huh, how, how is this thing really going to be used? And I maintain with all wheel drive, which many of the competitors aren't even offering, True. means this will do the off road and utility thing better than many SUVs. Or at flat out. Or at least as good as the ones most people are buying. Which I means buying sure. a minivan isn't, no, it's no longer sort of the, oh, you know, how big's your family? Or did you give up on life and <laughs> bought a minivan? Did you give up? No. 
And with the XSE, what's also interesting, it has different suspension than the other models. Mm. So this is the sport version. Everything is blacked out, including the Sienna across the back. It's sporty. Look at all the blacked mm. out. You get black wheels or charcoal colored wheels on this thing. But how many other car manufacturers are actually doing that? I feel like Toyota's being pretty ballsy and bold. And yes, the front end, you might not love it. But if you go to Japan, you look at everything else, you'll think, huh, that's pretty pulled back. It's, <laughs> I it's was trained. Well Japanese, done. Yeah. It's that Japanese bullet train kind of theme, which mm. is cool, but completely designed, engineered, and built in the U.S., which means they are very focused on the U.S. consumer and what Americans are doing with this thing. It's pretty interesting. What also dawns on me is the last time... Okay, I will admit, here's a strike. Small sunroof. Okay. Little tiny sun... Everybody else is doing panorama to the back... But who cares? I, well, but some people that? do. But that is so. That is small. It's a small strike. But I will say this though: the last time you and I had this much business class space mm -hmm. in a back seat was the huge hyper luxury sedan. If you look at the Audi A8L or the yeah, big true, Mercedes true. or the the crazy sedan that I owned with the Phaeton, that's the kind it of class that typically has the monster back seats where you want to be in the back more than the front. Here's a minivan doing that as well. Yeah, for sure. As already discussed, the, this is not first and foremost about the driving. No. But you will be driving this because that's <laughs> As part the of the minivan experience, of you actually drive. You, you yeah. will actually be driving it, which is the thing that you and I typically care about the most. And now we get into Prius uh, history and drivetrain mm -hmm. put into mm -hmm. this minivan. Again, they're all, as you mentioned before, they're all only available hybrid starting right. in 2021. So if right. you buy a Sienna, you bought a hybrid Sienna. When it was first yeah. given to us, it was shown as a range of over yeah, 500 sure. miles. Now we're almost to three quarters of a tank and it's still showing uh, a range Not of almost bad. 400. So Toyota says 36 across the board. So in town, on the highway, yeah. combined 36, which is actually pretty good for a minivan. And for a range like that, mm -hmm. That's where it should be. It should be on the road trip, the yep. long distance hauler kind of thing, Yep. which is impressive. Again, you can get this with all wheel drive. This is the sport version. So XSE is right kind of in the middle with a sport version. You can spec it with all wheel drive. Ours is front wheel drive, but with the all wheel drive, you still got the floor. You still got everything. Yeah. It's interesting. With the XSE also, it has a different suspension than all of the other models. So they've tightened the spring rate and they've given it a thicker stabilizer bar mm. and they've done a few tweaks to the suspension alone and they've given it a different steering ratio, steering rack, which because is, they've changed a they, little bit. I don't think they increased feel. I, I, I mean, that's not what you buy not this the point. for anyway. Not, not the exactly. point. Exactly. But, but it, it does it's, have a firm Interestingly, it's, yeah. it's not terrible. It does have it's a firm It's not like, wow, ride. this is the squishiest thing ever. No, it, it's it not. is not. not. I'm not saying it's a sports car. Not at all. But who cares? Yeah. It, as long as it drives a little bit interesting, aren't we all happy? Because we've got, you know, it's a minivan and it drives kind of interesting and that's it. Great. Great. Well, because I, of everything else it does. Yeah. I think the big takeaway for me as far as how it feels to drive is the fact that most of the time I'm not annoyed. I know that sounds weird. The one time I am annoyed, that's I'm doing loud. right now. That engine's pretty loud. And it's droney. Yeah, when you it's ask droney. for power, this is where the ECVT thing they've got going yeah. and the hybrid and all that kind of stuff, it wakes up that four cylinder and tells it to be angry and it just sounds be terrible. Angry. It just sounds In a terrible. Be angry. And I also think this only has a gauge that does charge, eco, or power based on your regenerative braking. Like if I hit the brakes right now, I'm into charge mode, that's fine. Are you in sport? I am in sport. sport. Okay, good. I am in sport. Right. But here's the thing about it. It is difficult to try to work with in any way other than letting it think for itself. If I, I do have a sport version here where I can go <laughs> over no paddles. And, no I can, paddles. and I can shift down and it tells me what gear I'm in. But I'm guessing based on the drone where I might need to shift. There's no tack. So that makes this, the fact that I can shift it kind of irrelevant because I'm totally guessing. When you consider the fact that this engine just drones, period. Sure. I, mm, I, I don't know that I'm being helped by having gear shifts. The other thing that's interesting about that all hybrid system that is only interesting because we've had it this week when it's been cold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's a hybrid, 
it doesn't want to use the engine. You need the engine for the heater. Well, and not when it's work if the engine's in the morning, not running? Well, but you, but you need the engine to work hard to warm up to warm the car. Yeah. And on a really I'm... cold morning, you can't tell the engine to do more very well. I'm being picky, but we happened to have it on a morning that was one degree. Yeah. Okay. And I realized okay. this version, the XSC, does not have a heated steering wheel, which was problematic. And I realized that without being able to force the motor to actually wake up, the heat didn't come on for a while because it was playing hybrid. That is sure. a very specific use case, but I was surprised to discover it. It doesn't have a heated steering wheel. This is a problem. I was surprised Holding to discover in a cold it climate. in a one yeah. degree morning. I'm okay. being picky okay. because, again, this isn't about the drive. It's about the experience. And that, when does the heater come on? I took my son to school. We were freezing. The heater, I would have thought, would kick on it does, the but it takes engine a, running. But it takes a while for the heater right? to warm up because the engine hasn't warmed up yet. Right. But so, that's but when yes, you just stomp being, the gas pedal. Being very specific. Kick, kick it on. Yes. You know, and you're By fine. and large, this is Toyota's hybrid system, which is phenomenal. I will say, I have generally liked Toyota's regenerative brake system and I don't like it in this. They've worked on the brakes in this to actually have more braking feel. I'm not sure that that's what's been done. You have to dig into the brakes a You've lot more to really lot. start to feel something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think it brakes fine and it I don't breaks, think pe most people will care. It probably, I really don't. probably won't be an issue. It does break fine. I find that I have to give a lot more pedal application than I expect to get it to break. Right, and then right. once it knows you're serious, it clamps down all of a sudden. So modulating the brake is a little bit difficult. Sure. Again, I'm being picky about something that was not designed for driving. Yeah. That is not where it, where it succeeds the most. But it was interesting to drive it for a few days, especially in the extreme cold, and discover these things. Yeah. The last thing on the list of things a minivan must do is drive well. I mean, honestly, there's a list of all the things, and the bottom is. is, how does this drive? And even though this is the sporty version, I mean, come on, that's not why you bought it. It's just not. I do need to drive this. You do, actually. yes. All right, here we go. I will ideally not pull out the traffic. Ideally, let's not get hit. Here's the last minute. Yeah. All right. Okay. A little bit more about the powertrain, and that is this understressed engine. <laughs> well put. It is quite <laughs> understressed. Assisted You're right, yes. by a 180 horsepower electric motor. Mm -hmm. The batteries are under us right now, underneath yep. Todd and I. Yep. So for packaging purposes, it's well done. I keep imagining myself being in the shoes of the design team. So, even though it only has on paper 245 horsepower, which you think, okay, okay, not, yeah. not the greatest, yeah. 375 pound-feet of torque, which means this thing, you can fill it full of people, and it'll tow 3,500 pounds. Yep. I yeah, come yeah. back to the SUV. Mm -hmm. Unless you're really towing, unless you're really hauling stuff, and even people carrying capability, the most you're ever gonna do with your SUV is do a fire road. Yeah. Many people buy a vehicle for the ride height. Check, this has the ride height. It does have quite a bit it's of ride It's got height. the space, yep. we've it's covered big. the space, we've covered so many things. Looks pretty good. They even raised the front of the hood. This is a little bit higher hood. And so it looks tougher in I a way. I think the designers really wanted to work on the Supra project and they added too many Supra lines to this. I mean, it's like, and I'll say this to Toyota. I'm fine with I that. I actually I'm think fine. the Supra is far better looking than most people give it credit for. However, I don't think that should be the general design direction of the Toyota product line. It feels like you parked the Supra in the minivan studio and I'm not <laughs> sure that was the right call. It does make it interesting. I'll give I you that. I think it is. Okay. Because All Supra's right. the halo car. Yeah. Let's make everything look like Supras. Uh, you gotta get a, you can't get the Supra, you have to get a van. Look at the rear in this. I find it interesting. I'm not the target market. I'm we not. are. You're right, you're right. We However, buy one of these. when you and I do production for multiple days at a time, whenever but we have a week is, of production, what we that. do like is having a minivan for that because of it's, doors and space and that kind of thing. And the that's rest back to something the, you mentioned earlier about SUVs, and we've mm -hmm. talked about this before, SUVs and CUVs, I feel like there is a tipping point that many people reach where they just go, I need more space, I should get an SUV, and many That's SUVs that are selling very well have less space than sedans. You've bought a tall car. You have. You've bought a variation on the hatchback idea. Yes. Which is fine, but let's, let's stop talking about five-seat CUVs as I bought it for the space, because 
Not really. If you were buying for space, you should be here. Yes. And with, with styling back to the styling, will you concede that it's interesting? Toyota has made a box interesting. It's Whether interesting. Whether or not yes. you like it. Yeah, okay, fair, fair, fair. I think it's, it looks better and is far more compelling than most minivans in the market. It's got haunches. It's sort of like <laughs> muscular minivan? <laughs> really? My minivan has haunches. Yay, I, haunches! I needed that? Uh, no, you don't need that. Sure. But okay. They did it. Yeah, they did it. They did it. It's got super haunches. Super It's haunches. a super van. <laughs> super CNN. Guys, we made a super van. You got to see it. It's super. Super.